A customer sent in their body control module for us to fix. One of the issues that they were experiencing was the door lock mechanisms were intermittently functioning. More specifically, they had a lot of issues with their trunk remaining unlocked or locked when it shouldn't be. So one of the things they did is they opened up their body control module and they physically put pressure on the circuit board. Now when they did that, that actually did restore functionality to the vehicle. So that is an indicator of physical damage to the board, more specifically crack solder joints. So we're gonna take a closer look under the microscope and see what we can find. My first step is I'm going to actually remove the circuit board out of the casing and we're gonna just wiggle it out. And the first thing I wanna do is take a look at the back where all of these connections connect through to the circuit board. Now the customer did mention they tried to fix it themselves by soldering some of those joints, but they weren't very confident with their work and they just wanted us to take a look and do it correctly. The customer did put a few blobs of solder, but the thing is that solder is sitting on top of the joints and I can tell that the PCB is not actually reflowed properly. I can see the original solder is not molten, it's not properly reflowed, so we will have to redo that work. Okay, so, so for example, this one here, there's a huge blob of solder and right now it looks like it could be soldered correctly. However, I don't know if that's just a blob of solder sitting over top of everything and if it's actually properly bonded between the pin and the PCB joints. So it's possible that this is actually our fault and we just can't see it because it's covered with that solder. So it is important that we don't put too much solder. So we're gonna remove some of that excess and then we're gonna make sure we get a nice good flow. Now these two were not touched up and I can see there is actually a little bit of a ring starting to form around the joints. That is a clear indication of stress from heating and cooling cycles and that's usually going to be what causes our cracked joints and so I am confident that this is going to be the cause of our fault here. Now oh this one over here does look like there's a significant ring so this actually could be the the defective pin that we need to to correct. Uh, this one as well a little, little bit. Actually a lot of these don't look quite good. So, some of them look okay but not all of them. Now, if you don't have the experience or the equipment to do this type of job, we'll have a link in the video description down below where you can contact us and let us know if you have any devices that you need to send in for us to fix. Now, for this job, because there are so many joints, I am not gonna be using the desolder pump or the desolder wick just because it's gonna take me a significant amount of time. So I am gonna be using the FR301 desolder pump. If you're interested in buying this, I'll have an affiliate link in the video description below. Otherwise, let's get started. And what I'm gonna do here is actually not remove 100% of the solder. And I'm gonna do that on purpose. I'm just gonna remove 90% of it. The reason for is if I did remove 100%, the connector would fall out. And I don't technically need to remove 100% of this solder. I just really need to reflow it. But because the customer did add their own solder on top and I don't know what kind of solder it is, I just feel more comfortable removing all the solder they installed and putting our own high-quality solder on there instead. Okay, and that joint is giving me a little bit of a hard time, and I believe it's because that one's a ground pad. So it typically will require a little bit extra heat, and I believe this one is also a ground pad. Now sometimes for these it makes sense to actually add solder to the joint first in order to get, help get good flow. I've just finished desoldering the first two connectors. I'm gonna do the rest off screen and we'll reconvene in a moment once I'm ready to resolder those pins. Okay, so we have finished desoldering all of our joints. So now it's time to go ahead and resolder them. So for this step, we are gonna just use our normal soldering iron and I'm gonna be using leaded solder. And I'll also have a link in the video description down below as to where you can buy this exact solder that we're using. And we're just gonna reflow all these joints. Now, I'm not gonna be adding new flux on this because the solder that we use does have flux embedded in the core already. And that should be enough flux that we don't need to add extra.
And as you can tell, there's actually a, a good amount of that flux inside of this solder, which does make it a lot easier to, to solder, but it is leaving a bit of a mess, so we'll definitely need to make sure we clean all that up with some IPA, isopropyl alcohol. Now these are the, uh, the two ground pads, I believe. So I am gonna hang out on the joint for just a couple extra seconds to make sure I get that good heat transfer. If you don't have proper heat transfer, you're not gonna get a good solder joint. And I probably put a little too much solder, although it's not gonna be detrimental because I know I had good heat transfer in there. And I'm talking about this joint right here, but it should be fine. All right, let's go ahead and give that a clean. Now that everything's clean, you can kind of tell there is an uneven amount of solder. So this joint, this joint, this joint, this joint, they look pretty good. We have a good amount of solder. And then these over here that are a little bit more shiny have less solder. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't think I actually need more solder, but just to make everything look pretty and even, we're gonna go ahead and add just a little more. Uh, again, I don't think it's necessary. I think I do already have a good bond between the, the pins and the PCB via my solder. This is not quite necessary, but I wanna do everything perfect because this is YouTube. Okay, we have a few more over here. Now there's not necessarily, it's not a bad thing to put too much usually. The only reason it's an issue and the reason I said it was a, a negative thing when the customer did it is because it made it so that I couldn't see what was underneath and so I couldn't tell if there was a good joint or not because it was just a huge blob. So it, it's very difficult at that point to tell if you have good connection between the pin and the PCB so that, that's the only reason I had a negative sentiment on that in the beginning. But as long as you know you have a really good joint, but that looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with these joints. If you found the video helpful or useful, make sure to leave us a like, subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching.